Hello there, it's Nooch. And welcome to our continuing series of abilities to upgrade by factions. So we have done three episodes in this. We kind of had a little delay while we covered the all-star events, but we've done, uh, we've done don't upgrade these for the entire game. We've done do upgrade and joggles for pirates. And today we're going to do do upgrade these abilities for space. So let's do it. All right. So here we are with our space heroes. And, uh, well, we're going to find out which abilities you should upgrade. And the goal of this is not to say, you know, like if you get a hero and you want to get them upgraded, upgrade them. You know, every upgrade has value. They're all valuable. But which upgrades are the most valuable? Which upgrades are you going to get the best bang for your buck, the most value out of doing them? So let's start at the very beginning with Commander Cold. And Nooch looked through it, and really none of these abilities from beginning to end... You know, they, they do improve, but you're not going to get a significant amount of improvement from the bottom of them to the top. So really, while they are worth improving, uh, his abilities are, are functioning a lot very similarly at the end as they are at the beginning. So Commander Cold doesn't make the list, unfortunately. Dr. Kelvin. Of course she makes the list. Nooch loves Kelvin. Uh, we look at first for her is her Frostbite Phaser. And if you look at it at its base level, it deals 100 and uh, deals 90% damage to the target foe and reduces their pep by 20%. But when we go to the top, it's 110% damage, so that's an extra 20% damage. Reduces their pep by 40%. That's that's an extra, that's doubling. That's double the reduction of pep. It also has a 100% chance to grant 25% pep to a random chill hero. So if you've got Commander Cold on the team or her, one of them's going to get four, uh, another 25% pep. And if the target is inflicted with Dizzy, another random hero gains 20% pep. You're going to see a lot of the Dizzy stuff with the chill characters, so that's just something to keep in mind there. Then uh, for Kelvin, if we look at Cooling Agent, at its base level, it uh, select a target hero. The hero gains damage block for one turn and has a 75% chance to clear one debuff. Already pretty good getting damage block, but at its max level, select a target hero, the hero gains damage block two for two turns. Was it one turn? Yeah, it was one turn before, so this is two turns now, and you have a 100% chance to clear one debuff. If the hero is chill, they have a 75% chance to clear a second debuff. And if Commander Cold is an active hero, which most of the time he's gonna be when you've got Kelvin out there, uh, Dr. Kelvin gains damage block two for so she also gains the damage block two and a lot of that kind of starts at level three um, But the two turns gets level four. So as you level that one up, it really pays off and then finally Dr. Kelvin's passive fresh powder at the beginning at the start of the battle all heroes gain 5% max health That is fine, but when you max it out all heroes gain 10% max health chill heroes gain 10% uh, dodge and whenever a foe counters, assists, or does a bonus hit, Dr. Kelvin has a 65% chance to heal all heroes for 50 for 5% of their max health. And that ability starts taking place at level 3. That's a big deal because this team, unless you have Gorwell, is lacking a healer. Even if you've got Quincy, you're lacking a healer. His heal is it's like a, a five turn cooldown. The, the opponent has to have a lot of buffs for heal. This is the best healing ability outside of Gorwell on the team because when you get a counter attack or a, when, you're, when your foes counter assist or do bonus hits, she's gonna heal your team for 5% of their health, 65% of the time and that matters. Okay, Locus. Locus has a lot of a lot of good ones here. Maximize efficiency. At its base level, he gains taunt for one turn and heals for 15% of his max health. That is all right, but at the max, he taunts for two turns, heals for 35% of his max health. That's an extra 20% heal. And he clears taunt from the target foe. So if there's he's targeted another taunting foe with a 50% chance to inflict max health down for two turns and a 10% bonus chance for each space hero. The main thing there is clearing the taunt. The max health down is nice, and then also keeping Tom for two turns and the extra heal is a big deal and is definitely worth the upgrade. Corporate Drones for Locus. At its base level, Corporate Drones deals 50% damage to all foes, has a 50% chance to grant each active hero attack up one for two turns. When you max it out, 
It's 90% damage to all foes, so that's a 40% increase in damage, which it's still not a ton of damage, but damaging everybody and a 40% increase, you don't get a lot of that. And a 100% chance to grant each active foe, each active hero attack up two for two turns. You're going to give every active hero attack up two, and that is huge. Along with Valiant, they're a couple of the only characters in the game that do that. Give the whole team attack up. And that's attack up two increases their attack by 30%. Space heroes have a 100% chance to gain defense up two for two. So you, all your space heroes are going to gain defense up two as well. Zotaxian, Zotaxian resilience, Zotaxian item. Whenever Locus, at its base level, whenever Locus has taunt, his defense has increased 5% for each other explorer hero. So all space heroes are explorer heroes, pirates are explorers. So any explorer hero, he's going to increase his defense by 5%. When you max it out, he's increasing it by 10% for each other explorer hero. So if you got a whole team full of explorers, that's 40%. If you're borrowing somebody for a big expedition, they're an explorer, that's 50% extra defense. Plus... Whenever Locus is attacked and has taunt, he has a 40% chance to inflict Bricked for one turn and a plus 5% bonus chance. We got a little bit of reads kind of blocking it there. Plus 5% bonus chance for each other's space hero. So if your team is all space, there's four of them, you're going to have a 60% chance to inflict Bricked. And what Bricked does is when, when your opponent has it and they use a special ability, they take damage. And that's what Bricked is. So that's a really nice ability to upgrade. And finally, his ultimate. Most of these ultimates are worth upgrading. At space level, it deals 50% damage to all foes. So he's got two AoEs for Locust there. And has a 100% chance to inflict attack down one on each foe for two turns, which is nice. And, and by the way, that's like a, a, a 40 to 60% swap there. If they've all got attack down and you guys have attack up, you're, you're getting them down and you're up. That's really nice. Has a 30% chance to inflict disarmed on each foe for one turn. That's a 30% chance. Now remember this, when we get to the end when we upgrade it. 80% damage to all foes. It was 50%, so it's a 30% damage increase, plus 10% bonus damage for each space hero, and that starts coming in at level 3 again, um, and a 100% chance to inflict attack down 2 on each foe for 3 turns, 50% chance for disarmed on each foe, and city foes have a 100% chance to get disarmed. So that's a significant upgrade for maximum overdrive for Locus. It is worth upgrading. Spaceman Raid, we got one, and where is it? It is the Antenna Gun, Antenna Gun, which one? Antenna Gun, this was, this is tremendous. At its base level, it deals 80% damage to target foe. If the ability critically hits the target, it inflicts stun on them for one turn. Well, when you get to level 4 there, you can see that it just inflicts stun. It doesn't have to critically hit. And level 5, you're increasing your damage from 80% up to 120%. That's a 40% increase. We've seen that that 40% increase is kind of rare, so it's really nice to have. Quincy. Quincy does have one. Yes, Nooch is aware of Quincy's uh, limitations as a character. It seems like he should do more, and his healing should be more available, more often, more. It should, he just needs more healing for this team to work until you get lucky enough to get Gore well in a bag. But Reverse Engineered, at its base, it deals 60% damage to target foe and reduces their pep by 3% for each buff they have, up to a maximum of 3 buffs. So maximum of 9% pep reduction. At its max, it deals 100% damage, so that is a 40% damage increase again. Reduces their pep by 5% for each buff they have, up to a maximum of 5 buffs. So we've gone from a 9% to a 25% pep reduction. If the target foe has prepared, which that's kind of rare. This is a really weird add-on here, but it's there, so... Uh, if they have prepared, you clear it and inflict disarm for two turns. So you actually have turned what was going to be a guaranteed critical hit into not being able to use any special abilities. So if that happens, it's really valuable. Um, if the target foe has no buffs at the start of the attack, inflict buff immunity for two turns. That is valuable. And that comes in only at the max level here. So what you do is you start off the battle, and Quincy usually goes first. For some reason, the AI has him do his healer first, which is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous way to start a battle. He should always start with this ability, because if you use it on a tank, they're going to have buff immunity for two turns, and they can't taunt. So you're going to use this ability on a tank, keep them from taunting for the first two turns of the match. Next, we go to Blacktron. Dwayne. Next, we go to Spaceman Jens. All of it, guys. Jens and Gorwell. All of it. Upgrade all of it for the love 
of everything that is holy with Jens and Gorwell. Everything they have is so valuable. Well, we're going to look at it here. His base ability does 75% damage and a 50% chance to skill down one turn. At its max, it's 100% damage. That is a 25% damage increase. 80% chance to inflict skill down two. And if they had 65% le or less health or an attacker, they're inflicted with speed down. Or an attacker is added there on the end. That is so huge. Speed down is a massive debilitator to your enemy. Not debilitate, per se. Uh, uh, solar Flare, level 1, 85% damage, and inflicts Brick for one turn. That's nice. At its max, 115% damage. Inflicts Brick for two turns. Has a 75% chance to inflict Hero Passive Block. Are you kidding me? That starts at level 3 also. No, level 2. It starts having Hero Passive Block. You're blocking that Hero's passive ability with this. Do, get there and find the hero with gotta start memorizing those passive abilities and you just gotta get better at that block that thing man that can imp if you block like say kelvin's passive the whole team would lose 10 percent max health immediately until until it's get until the block comes off but it's a, it's two turns so um and you get a bonus chance for each tech hero at the start of the attack at the foe's total number of buffs and debuffs is six or more each other space hero has a 70% chance to have their ability cooldowns reduced by one. For the love, this guy is making space ridiculous. Okay, blast off. Level 1, 90% damage, plus 5% bonus damage for each foe that has stealth, and reduces their pep by 25% at its max. 125% damage, that's a 35% damage increase, plus 15% bonus damage for each foe that has stealth. That's If, if you had four foes that had stealth, at the beginning, that's 20%. Now it's 60% bonus damage. And reduce their pep by 50% for the one you're attacking. All other foes of stealth have a 60% chance to gain stacks of damage over time. If they're really low in health, they're going to die on their next turn. And if this ability defeats them, they can't be reassembled. So you can't be using uh, Aurora to reassemble, reassemble uh, minifigures here. Tech support. At the start of the battle, each space and tech hero gains 10% max health and 10% defense. That's nice already. Right there at the base level, it's better than Kelvin's max passive. Right there. Now, we get to the max. 25% health and 25% defense. That is insane. And for each classic space hero, which is going to be Jens and Reed, all heroes gain 5% speed. So they're going to gain 10% speed. You're going to see if that combines the Ice Station Odyssey, you can gain even more speed. At the end of his turn, Jens has a 60% chance to clear one debuff from himself, plus 5% bonus chance for each techie hero. You're not going to have a lot of techie with space. I guess if you have Tar Kartoski there, that's a help. If he has no debuff at the end of his turn, he has 50% chance to clear one debuff from another random space hero. And if they have no debuffs, they gain debuff immunity. That's moderately strong. He's going to be handing out some debuff immunity, and that's the biggest part of that. And then let's look at his ultimate. The ultimate that has no sound for whatever reason. Oh, by the way, this character also has no sound. The last few new characters have had no sound in game. Every other character makes sound. Not Quincy, because he's new ish. Hey devs, you might want to fix that. It seems small, but it's kind of, kind of, you know, it's just fun. Okay, on is his ultimate. At base level, it inflicts all foes randomly with either vulnerable or debilitate, then deals 100% damage to random foes two times. So it hits two foes randomly for 100% damage, ignoring stealth and taunt. When you max it out, all foes randomly with either vulnerable or debilitate. The beginning was that's the same thing. Then deal. 150% damage, so that's 50% more damage four times. Uh, so that is 350% more damage. Is that right? It's way more than that. It's a lot of damage. Nooch had this, if you watch the, the Jens video, Nooch had, had this hit Kai three times on one ultimate and wiped Kai off the face of the earth. So big deal and each flow is infected with bricked disarmed a hero passive block already has a 75 percent chance to increase its duration by one these are big deals guys big deals okay kartofsky we're looking at his emp bomb at its base level 
Why is this not working? There we go. At its base level, it deals 30% damage to all foes, has a 45% chance to inflict heal block one on each foe for two turns, has a 50% chance to clear stealth. And then at its max, it deals 55% damage to all foes. That's a 25% damage increase. Still not a ton of damage. Has a 70% chance to inflict heal block, which it was 45 before. On each foe for two turns, plus 20% bonus chance if they have stealth. And has an 80% chance to clear stealth. It was a 50% chance from each foe. If the foe, if a foe is critically hit, which someone's going to be critically hit, increase their ability cooldowns by one. That's only at level five. That's a huge deal, and that is worth the upgrade, guys. Scan for weaknesses. We we got we have a lot of abilities in these space guys to upgrade, especially because you have Gorwell and and uh, and uh, Jens in here. Okay, scan for weaknesses. Base level 85% damage and inflicts vulnerable at its max 110% damage. Inflicts vulnerable if they had 50% or less health or has four or more debuffs. You have a 75% chance to inflict disarm for two turns and more bonuses for each techie hero. And if we look at his passive cloak matrix, whenever he is critically hit, he gains a 20% chance to gain stealth for one turn. At its max, whenever he's critically hit, there's a 60% chance to gain stealth for one turn. And whenever he attacks, the foe with the lowest health and stealth has a 40% chance to have its duration reduced by one, 5% bonus. So he's reducing stealth. Again, this is kind of an anti Ninjago ability. Gor Gorwo makes noise. All of Gorwell's stuff. Let's let's zip through this. You guys can read it. 90% damage to target foe. One stack of infant, uh, infestation at its max. 110% damage. One stack of infant, infestation to a random hero. If they have 50% or less health, they have a 65% chance to gain a bonus stack of infestation. We're going to see what infestation does here in a minute. Uh, Hive Mind's orders. Select a target hero. They gain a stack of infestation and a 40% chance to gain a bonus stack. If they're spaced, they, they deal 60% damage to a random foe and 10% bonus damage for each 10% bonus damage for each stack of infestation they have. And it ignores stealth and taunts. So you can target anybody you want. At its max, select a target hero, they gain one stack and a 100% chance to gain a bonus stack if they're space. So they're going to gain two stacks for all your space heroes. They deal 100% damage to a random hero, random foe, plus 20% bonus, plus 20% bonus damage. It was 10%. Now if you have multiple stacks, you're just doing a ton of damage and it ignores stealth and taunt. And if the hero is space and they attack a foe with taunt, clear taunt and copy to the tank hero with the most health. If the target hero is space and they attack a foe with stealth, clear stealth from the foe and copy it to Gorwell. Are you kidding me? Keeping her alive, so much going on there. Cere Cerebral Feast. Heals themselves for 10% of their max health plus 1% bonus heal for all stacks of infestation on all active heroes. And at its max, 25% plus 3% bonus health. It's just, it's just it's just exponential for all the infestation that's out there. Where did all my friends go? At the start of the battle, all heroes gain one stack of infestation. Maxed out, they all gain two. At the start of her turn, if Gorwell is the last active hero, they, but they is uh, Gorwell and, uh, oh, 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 what is she? Gorwell and, Deborah and Gorwell. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> the start of Goro's turn, if she is last active hero, gain attack up two for four turns, which this is kind of weird. Uh, critical damage up and critical chance up. So basically, if she's the only one left, she's just going to start brawling on people, kind of. So, well, that's... Maybe you shouldn't have that one in. That's a little bit questionable. And finally, Mothership Backup. Heals each hero for 10% of their max health. Plus 5% bonus health heal for each stack of infestation. If the hero had three or more stacks, they gain defense up for two turns. And finally, at max, they heals each hero for 15% of their max health. Plus 15% of their each stack of infestation. If they got like three stacks, they're healing for 60% of their max health. Right here, she's the best healer in the game, right? In the game. Nooch's going to say in the game. If that hero has two stacks of infestation or more, they gain defense up two for two turns. And if they had four stacks, they also gain prepare, which means their next hit will be critical. Unbelievable for Gorwell. Now let's go take a look at the sets. Each of the sets has a couple of different abilities that are worth upgrading. Uh, well, actually, we're only going to look at three of the sets. Probably not going to look at Spy Track. Spy Track does not qualify as something it's worth. Um, so if we look at Galaxy Explorer, we are going to look at Lightspeed. At its base level, 
light speed. Ex Explore heroes increase your speed by 1% per active classic space hero. So that's going to be Reed and Jin. So they're going to increase your speed by 1%, so 2%. When you max it out, and that's all it was there, right? Yeah, so when you max it out, at the start of the battle, Explorer Heroes increase your speed by 2% per active space hero, and I have a 30% chance to gain dodgy. That means that it's likely that two, one, well, may, for sure one, not for sure, but very sure one, maybe even two, possibly three of your heroes are going to get dodgy at the beginning, and that means the first attack on them misses. They're going to gain the 60% extra speed, but that dodgy is a big deal. And it comes in really handy when you're trying to get ghosts. When you're playing the Ghost Master event, you want some dodgy on your guys. This is the this is the ability, the best space set ability. System restart. Whenever a space hero deals damage, they have a 20% chance to clear all buffs from that foe. And when you max it out, it's a 50% chance to clear all buffs. And for each buff cleared, you are reducing pep by 3% and increasing your own pep by 3%. Need we say more? That's a massive pep exchange. Reducing yours, increasing mine, clearing all your buffs. That is a huge stinking deal, guys. A huge stinking deal. All right, for Ice Station Odyssey, Cold Space starts at level 1. Space heroes have their speed increased by 5%. Chill heroes have their skill increased by 5%. But when you max it out, space heroes have their speed increased by 20%. Chill heroes have their skill increased by 20%, and all the other heroes have their defense increased by 10%. That 20% speed increase, if you combine it with Jen's passive, you can have a 30% speed increase. Is, that, is it 30 or is it more? We'll go back and look in a minute. You're just going to have a ton of speed on that team, and speed is what runs the, what runs the world. Speed! What runs the world? Speed! Okay, so speed runs the world. All right, and system restart now. No, that's not system restart. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We're looking at the wrong set. Data extraction. We're still looking at the wrong set. Orbital targeting. <sighs> okay. Sorry, Nooch is losing it a little bit. Where is this? Okay. <sighs> We're trying to get through this, guys. <laughs> at level one of orbital targeting. Whenever an ice planet hero uses a special ability, each hero has a 10% chance to gain accuracy up for one turn. When you max it, it's a 30% chance. And each foe has a 40% chance to lose stealth. We see, again, more anti-Ninjago get rid of their stealth stuff. And then finally, not the spy track, but the Alpha Centauri outpost, only available in the Quincy event, as far as Nooch is aware, unless someone is seen it somewhere else. Um, this doesn't, Honestly, I think this is the third best set, but we'll look at it. These abilities. Bufftron. At the start of each hero's turn, if the total number of buffs on the foe's team is 16 or more, it's like if you're facing a castle team or a Ninjago team, it's going to be that. The hero has a 20% chance to gain attack up for one turn, which is okay. At its max, at the start of each hero's turn, if the total number of buffs in the foe's team is 10 or more, so that's a lower a lower ceiling, that hero has a 35% chance to gain attack up one for one turn. Blacktron heroes have a 70% chance to gain attack up two instead. Again, I'm just saying that you get... <laughs> there's a lot more to the upgrade... Not saying it's a super valuable upgrade. Um, you just, you just not get. I think Jens is a Blacktron hero, but still, uh, yeah, you're just, there's just not a lot there. And where is our other one? We keep looking at the wrong one. Data extraction. My goodness, Nooch is losing it, losing it. We're running out of brain space. We're fading fast. Let's finish it up. Whenever a space hero defeats a foe, copy up to two buffs from that foe to the hero. And at the end, when you defeat a hero foe, copy up to five buffs from that foe to the hero. Each hero has a 35% chance to gain critical chance up for two turns. And if a Blacktron hero defeats the foe, heroes have a 35% chance to gain critical chance up to for two turns instead. And let's let's just verify. Uh, Nooch is not thinking clearly now, but I do believe Jens is a Blacktron hero there he is not quincy's a blacktron hero there we go so only quincy so quincy and blacktron Dwayne, who are two of kind of the worst space heroes guys actually i think they are the two worst space heroes are really coming down to brass tacks so you have a set there that's designed for the two worst heroes so i wouldn't recommend a, <laughs> i wouldn't recommend upgrading that set but if you're going to those are the two abilities that are the best guys 
that's it. Those are these space abilities you should upgrade. They are long and plenty. And, uh, and hopefully this helps you as you're looking at your space heroes. You can put together a really good team. And hopefully if you're lucky enough to have Gorwell, go get her, upgrade her, because she is awesome. And while you're doing that, keep in mind that Nooch too good. Thanks for watching, and please like the video down below. You can also check out Nooch's contributors up there. You can subscribe on Darth Vader over here, and you can watch more videos on this side. We'll see you next time.